and welcome to this video on the bowling knot or bowline as it is also called. This knot is as old as the ancient Egypt. Uh, there have been archaeological finds on uh, Pharaoh's, Pharaoh Khufu's, one of his ships anyway. There was uh, one of these bowlines in the rigging. The net modern name comes from the lines holding the yards forward. So um, yards are big bars on ships, big big sticks on ships. And sometimes you want to hold them forward so that they don't they are not taken aback by the wind. So you, you pull them forwards towards the bow of the ship, and that's for it's a bow line knot. Uh, one of my scouts actually remarked that it kind of looks like a personal flotation device here. So you have the net, the head here, and the flotation device here with the black part. And this knot you would use for basically when you want a a loop that does not slip. So it, it's not a noose; it's a, a fast loop. Or not a fast, a a uh, non-slip knot. And the the process of this is fairly easy to tie um, once you've got the hang of it and it unties really easily so I've put a lot of strain here and then you break the neck of it so to say you just push this and then it then it's really easy to untie if you've seen me uh, on the uh, fisherman's bend video or overhand knot it they are really tight when you pull them um, there is some experience about this not slipping, and it's not as easy to control when it's right tied as the uh, figure of eight loop, for example. So this is this would be not sufficient of a uh, bit around here or working end left. So you need, as all knots, really, you need uh, uh, some bit here to to mitigate slipping. And also, you cannot really tie tie this when the standing part is under load, and you cannot untie it either when the standing part is under load. So if you expect it to be under load when you are to release it, or if it's under tension when you tie it, you would be better off to use a couple of round turns and two half hitches instead. And this knot retains about 60% of the rope's breaking strength. So if the rope would be able to hold 100 kilos, um, this knot would be able to, this would break it at about 60. And that varies, of course, with the type of rope and and such. And this can be compared to the figure of eight loop, which retains about 70%. So the figure of eight loop is a little bit stronger. And it, it has to do with this part here being a really sharp turn. So in some variants of this knot, you will make this less sharp. So I would expect, I haven't seen any numbers, but I would expect them to hold a little bit better. So this is the weak part of this knot, this, this, the break here. Okay, so how to tie it? Well, the common way, or some, as some I would have described as the Cub Scout way, is with the story. Uh, and I know, I will use one version. Uh, there exists the versions where you uh, there's a rabbit going around a tree, but I will use the dragon and princess because that's what I've been taught. So you start with making a lake like this, and the princess is here. So you make a lake, uh, a loop like that. You take the working end up through the loop, around the prince or princess, and back down again. And then you the, the princess does not want to get pulled down into the lake, but the dragon wants to, so you pull both of the dragon parts and the princess, and that's how you do it. Okay, so once more, because this is the basis of understanding how to tie, how other versions work. So you start with making one of these, and make sure this part is on top of the princess feet, and then around, and then down. When you're learning it, this knot, it's good practice to try to, to get the working end on the inside of the loop, so to say. So that it goes like that, and then it ends up on the inside. Because if you learn to tie this knot, you simultaneously learn to tie the sheet band. 
the bowline or bowline. It holds equally as good here, more or less. This is, would be called a cowboy bowline or a Dutch bowline. But since a sheath band does not hold when you when tie it like this, I would advise learning against it. Some argue that it's quicker to tie this way when you learn to tie it in the fast way. So the lake, up through the lake, around, and then down. So this is the Cub Scout way. Um, the quicker way would be to hold hold uh, your left hand like this, right hand like this, cross like that. It's important that you cross like this and not like that or like this, like that. You take your thumb and your point finger, forefinger maybe in English, pinch, and then you twist like so. And here uh, you can see that the lake and the dragon and everything is already set up. So all you have to do is basically just grab the princess and down in the lake again. So you take two ends, cross, twist, and then like that. Down again. And this, this is too short. It should be longer. So maybe something like this. And when I tie this really quickly, I kind of just do like that. So I, I do like this and then grab like that and then around. But this is muscle memory. This is this is a muscle memory thing. So you just have to, to try and practice and then do it quicker and quicker and see where you mess up. Uh, I know some fail doing like that, that they lose kind of, and they end up, they have too much, um, they end up like here and then they, they don't know what to do. So in the beginning, pinch, kind of do that motion with the hand. And then you have to sort the ends up. So that's how I would I would advise uh, learning this. You can, if you have time to prepare, but you want to make the execution, final execution, really quick, you can make an overhand knot, uh, an overhand noose knot like this. So the standing part here is like the sliding end part, like that, and the working end is, is where the knot, knot is on. And then you go to the uh, jump uh, to land with with the the rope from your boat. Then slide it through whatever, and then let the boat pull on this here, and it inverts. And then you have you have a uh, bowline again. Make sure if you're doing this. trying to invert it back again. Harder than I expected. Make sure you have enough rope through here. If you only have a little bit, you risk ending up in this situation. And this, of course, will slip and let go. If you want to make use of this for climbing, um, there are some arguments for and against. First and foremost, you must make sure that you have a lot of a lot of working and as with the figure of eight uh, make sure you're able to tie a stopper knot here but to be on the safer side you really should make a uh, bowline with a bite or on a bite it's basically just back threading um, as you would okay let's do it like that yeah that would be good Maybe. So here I have the bowling, the uh, the. Uh, oh, let's see. Okay, I'll do from the beginning again. This get messy. I need some more. So I'll start with making an ordinary one. And it's hard to see now because there's some mixed. This is a normal one. 
and then I just backthread as you would with a figure of eight. I think this is actually uh, approved and, and applied by the German mountaineering, a German mountaineering organization. So this is, this certainly will hold. And this bit, of course, you can tie off with a stopper knot so that you don't get a lot of, um, a lot of bits of ropes hanging about. Make sure you clip in into both of these, and this will this will hold. And as you can see, I told you about the breaking strength for before. Since you have two pieces of rope here. This does not get as sharp return, I think. I have not seen any numbers, but I would guess this will hold a little bit better than the normal bowline. And this is also a good knot if you want to have, if you don't want to look for the end of the rope, but you want to loop in a certain spot at the rope. So then you can. I said it was a bowline with a bite, so. Something like this, maybe. Make a bite. Make a loop, like the Princess and Dragon loop. You take the bite, go up through the lake, but then around this way instead. And you can. And now you've succeed, successfully made a loop in the middle of the rope. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video here at Knots and Ropes.